progress. Here we go. We can we can start and uh, get right out of the chute. We have the attendance sheet going around. Correct. Yes. Correct. Good. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Cheryl, for getting that. Or did you say your own? It was Cheryl. You she got. She to the chat room. Can you show me the chat room for just a second? Sure can. It was so funny because sure. three. we've got, yeah, Carol Starr, Christy Freer, and Susan Edgel. Right. And I, think that's I don't know why we're not coming through, but I'm not, I can't, see, you don't On see the me. video? Yeah. Yeah, hmm. we're not seeing you at least. Okay, well. We can hear, we can hear you fine, Carol. Okay, that's okay. I don't have any message about why you're not seeing me, so I'm not going to worry about it. Um, no. Imagine it's on your end. Possibly. We've been having trouble off and on today. Oh, okay. They're texting our media client. They like buying them. Oh. Okay. Okay. Well, Oh, thank you. That really nice. While that goes goes around, I'll go ahead and do the uh, faith and social concerns. Um, again, since Deb set a precedent, I'm going to stand up. Nope. Thank you, Deb, for doing that. Yeah, you <laughs> but anyway, I, um, what I would like to do is use this faith and social concerns as a reflection of this past year and offered up to what we will experience in three days is God's birth, the gift of his son and the birth of Jesus. So let me start with a quote from Matthew. There I am, I'm on now. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. It is not only a historical event, but also a spiritual starting point for all that will be. Let's fast forward to now. It is what LUM has meant to so many clients who have availed themselves to programs, our hospitality, our sustenance, and grace. I too have benefited from this grace simply by being associated with LUM. I have received the gift of your council as board members, the staff, and the volunteers throughout the year. For that, I am grateful and humbled. This grace will carry with me for years to come. The words and actions of this past year reminds me of my favorite Bible verse from John. I give you a new commandment, love one another. Just as I have loved you, you must also love one another. My observations of love is one of God's love in action. We are Christ's hands and feet, but also his heart. We work together to show the Lafayette community that we are following Christ's mission, whether welcoming the homeless through our overnight shelter, providing food through our protein pantry, or providing remedial education for the youth of our community. We serve at the behest of our God. We share in that kingdom that God provides to each of us. We recognize that basic essence of God in each other. So hopefully, as we continue supporting LUM, we will continue meeting the needs of those who are the least of these among us. Prayerfully, I offer that we would, when we stand before our God, that we will hear, well done, my good and faithful servant, well done. Well done, Chuck. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for that. Um, so roll call and check in. Uh, we don't officially roll call here, but we see everyone is here and our sign up sheet is coming forward. Um, do we need to skip? Yes. Okay. We'll wait for our meet a client to come. She's going to come via Zoom. She's one of our Jubilee Christmas uh, oh. families. So Excellent. When she arrives, we'll uh, defer to her. Excellent. So, yep. 
So proof of due notice of meeting is that you were all here. You received either a email or some other notification to please arrive. A review and approval of the minutes. Um, Chris, if you would like to note the one correction that you brought forward before. John Hill was born in Rolla, Missouri, not Puerto Rico. <laughs> okay. Yeah, do pay attention to it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Wait that around. So while she's do doing that correction, uh, anyone else have any comments? Where was it in Missouri? Rolla. R O L L A. Yeah. Rolla. Just Rolla like it sounds. Yeah. 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 Okay. <laughs> I think we got to approve the minutes. If you mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I was going to. Um, is there a motion to approve the minutes as written from last month? So, Steve, thank you. A second? Thank you. Carl, thank you. All in favor of approving the minutes as presented, say aye. 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 Any opposed? The ayes have <laughs> Call for additional agenda items. Uh, anything present? Mm -hmm. And our executive council for first out of the shoot uh, is the 2020, 2023, excuse me, 2023 calendar, which is on the back side of the front page of the agenda. Uh-huh. It does. Okay. So this is the latest edition. That's the latest edition. Okay. Yep. You know, a few of the dates could move around, but uh yeah. most of it is is pretty well set, trying to just outline the days, the holidays, uh, when our board meetings will be, those kind of things. So everyone's literally on the same page. For the next 12 months. Yeah. Anyone observe anything that's an issue? If not, I will ask for a motion to approve the 2023 calendar. I'll make a motion to approve the calendar as we said. Thank you much, Nina. A second. A second. Cheryl, thank you. All in favor of approving our calendar, say aye. 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 And opposed? The ayes have it. And now for our budget, which thankfully, <laughs> Rihanna is here. Well, the treasurer is uh, not here because of the impending bomb cyclone or whatever it is. <laughs> uh, they moved their Christmas Eve service till tonight. And so he's had a part in that. And so yeah. they're participating in that. So yeah, well, uh, Leanne is here, who is our finance uh, yeah. director. And we also have other people from the finance team here. Mm -hmm. And before we start, Leanna, um, we must remove it uh, from the table. So um, Mr. President. Yes. May I make a motion to remove from the table the motion to approve the 2023 budget for the last year of the ministry? Thank you. Do I hear a second for second. that? Thank you, Mark. And since the motion to remove the main motion from the table is not debatable, we will now vote on the motion to remove the table, move from the table, the main motion to approve the 2023 budget for Lafayette Urban Ministry. So all in favor say aye. 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 And those opposed, the ayes have it. Um, now, uh, the main motion to approve the budget has been removed. I now open the debate and or comments uh, for the, the approval of the budget. Yeah. Um, we really just have one significant change from last in November. Uh, that is to move the finance director <laughs> from half time to two thirds time for 2023. 
um, that's an increase of a little over nine thousand dollars. You can see that at the bottom of your sheet here. Um, we also, as we are learning more about um, our prior year restricted funds from a previous donation, um, we can use some of uh, some of those funds to cover the deficit in the youth pro in the youth program budget, and so that basically helps us pay for the finance director. <laughs> Position. So you'll see at the end of the day, it's still a balanced budget after we use those prior year funds. Um, and so those are the two significant changes we made since November. Otherwise, it's the same. And the finance director is the new fundraiser? No, no that's you. Yeah. <laughs> that's why she chuckled. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were a business. So okay. we renamed it. You're you're not wrong. It was business manager. Now it's finance director. Okay. Just to keep everybody confused. Yes. Yeah. 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 It's worth it. Yeah. Good. All right. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you. Well, is there any of any, anything else that anyone observed or called in about um, over the last four weeks since our last meeting? That was when. Was, I I didn't sir. call in about this. I just um was curious um the total grant income in the budget for 2022 was only 26,000 but yet as of September we had 118,000 mm -hmm. in grants so what how how did that happen <laughs> I mean we were wildly successful in getting some <laughs> grants one of them was a $70,000 grant to the after school program. Oh. So that helps a lot. And then we got a $25,000 grant for the immigration clinic. Okay. And so there you're at 100,000 pretty yeah. much. And then yeah. we got several other $5,000 grants and oh. a little, uh, you know, $500 grants, those kind of things. Oh. Uh, so that, that's awesome. Yeah. That I mean, was, so then next year is 121 is what we're budgeting for the grants. Um, All right. Yes. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. Yeah. So, so, so we are confident that that good thing will repeat. Well, <laughs> we're depending on you, Mark. So. <laughs> 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 Whose responsibility is it to write the grants for loan? Mostly it's been mine. Christy wrote the successful grant for her piece, and uh, others have. Uh, written grants as well. Josh Prokopi, his position is built into this budget. He would become a full-time person and he would also become a grant writer. So most of the grant writing would then become his. My name might be attached to it, but he would be doing the research and the actual writing and different things like that. Yeah, well, congratulations so, yeah. for a successful year. That's wonderful. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Thank you. Yeah, that's the number actually that probably makes us the most uncomfortable just because it's un most grants go for extra things, you know, not operational expenses. So we'll have to be uh, clever. And I mean, we're not uh, just go after the grants that will help us get to our goals. So, yeah. Anything else, Leanna, or anyone? I just have a, a question about yeah. the campaign for the future. What type of um, boundaries are set, or how hard are those boundaries for what we call a restricted access um, line item? Um, is there anything that has to happen in order for those funds to be released out of what, what is called on this sheet a restricted asset? I'll defer to you, Leanna. Yeah. Um... So it, it depends. There's a couple of kinds. <laughs> there's there's when a donor makes a contribution to a specific program. Right. Um, and and we kind of true that up at the end of the year. We look at, you know, how much came into a program, how much went out from that program. And if they're if it ran a deficit, then we don't restrict any of that because by the end of the year it balances itself out. Um, things like grants, we track very specifically on, you know, so Christie's grant is an example that 70,000, we're tracking very specifically every dollar and how we're spending that. Um, the biggest pool we have of restricted funds is campaign from the future. So the campaign that was in 2010, if I'm right. Um, and it was a 
somewhat broad campaign from the documents that we have. It's all about what we communicated to donors of, of what the funds are going to be mm -hmm. used for. Um, so we, I think this has been a, a topic we've been trying to grapple with and get some clear understanding of, and certainly it's, it's a little bit new to be. So I've been trying to do that. So we have read that document of the campaign for the future and what that was solicited for. I, I probably have read it 50 times in the sure. last two months. Uh, it was fairly broad. Um, it was for supporting youth um, in our after school program. The reason we're using it here for our after school program, when the when that campaign happened, there were 20 students in our after school program that are now 65. So anytime we run a deficit in that program, it's supporting the kinds of what those funds are going to be for, for instance. Yeah. Um, so we're that is because that is the biggest pot. Um, and just over the last few years, it's discovered that there's some left over from that. Um, but we are trying to um, winter warming station is another program that didn't exist at the time. Part of campaign for the future was to support homeless services, and so we're considering that as use of those funds. Mm -hmm. So it's fairly broad, but we're trying to stick pretty clear to what the you know what the brochure said when that right. campaign was run. Yeah, it's nice to have a discretionary mm -hmm. uh, pool like that too. So I appreciate your diligence looking through that document. Yeah, so we're we're trying to be. Um, Aggressive, I guess, in in freeing up those funds, but true to what the document says. So. Yeah. Are there any other I just comments? Have another question. Okay. Uh, um, so we're hiring a chaplain. Have we have mm -hmm. we hired a person yet? No, no? that's just in the budget. If it's yes, if it's uh, approved, we'll pursue it um, sometime in early early twenty twenty three. I hope. No, so. Are you thinking like half time or ten hours a week? Ago. Ten hours. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Any comments from those on Zoom? And any more here? Um, as I hear no more discussion on the topic, um, I will entertain someone to make an approval to approve the budget for 2023. A motion. I make needs a to make a motion. To yeah. the budget. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Vice. Second. Second. Thank you, Sharon. All those in favor, say aye. 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 And those opposed? No names. The ayes have it. So we now have an approved budget for 2023. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Leanne. Thank you. Good work on all the work that you did for this. Mm -hmm. Sure. Mm -hmm. For our executive council slates, uh, before we begin, um, are there any nominations from the floor, either verbal or ones that are in writing that you wish to turn in? No, excellent. I have not received, or anyone here, I don't think we've received any write-in candidates from before this meeting. Um, and so your a list of your are on the back of your sheets for the council for 2023. And it is necessary to recognize each person individually. Um, so for president, it was Deb Parent, vice president, Barb Tyner. I don't think Barb is here. Um, She's traveling, I believe. Uh, yeah. Secretary Debbie Fleetham, okay. Treasurer Tricia Sombrowski, and we already know what her disposition is. Personnel, Nina Morgan. Programs, Dr. Reverend Dr. Gladys Waba. There she is online. Yep, mm -hmm. I see her there. Buildings and grounds, Bob Chucky. I don't think he was here this evening. His wife just had ankle surgery, so he's playing Mr. Nurse on that. Uh, very good, a worthy distraction. Um, 
are there any that I that I named unwilling to serve on the council? Thank you for thank you for not speaking up. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I could do that. I gotta go. No other status. So, given that, I I would wish to entertain a motion for accepting the slate of officers as presented uh, from last month. I have a motion. I move to accept the slate of candidates approved at the last meeting. Thank you, Ms. Nina. And a second, please. I'll second. Thank you, Susie. All in favor of accepting the motion, please say aye. Aye. And opposed? Excellent. The ayes have it. Okay. And our last action item uh, has to do with Susan Edgell, who is on Zoom. Hi, Susan. And I yes. think Wes has a background on that. Uh, yes. Um, so our bylaws state that if we want to have an at-large board member, we can. We simply have to approve that person. We do have some at-large members. Um, I think Paul Dixon is one with the Centennial Neighborhood. Deb Parent is one. And so Susan would like to serve on the board. And she's a wonderful person. She's been very involved in volunteering at the after school program. The kids love her. She loves the kids. So I asked her to consider being like a advocate for the kids in particular, kind of a voice for the kiddos and the kids programs in our midst. And she was willing to do that. And not only for the LUM programs, but just kid issues in Greater Lafayette. Susan, would you like to say anything about yourself? I have been volunteering at the after school program for the last couple of years, ever since it reopened with the, after the pandemic. I love the kids. I love the program. I am really excited to be allowed to be part of the board and advocate for children. I'll work with Wes to make sure that 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 I do what is necessary and right for this board. Thank you, Susan. Anybody have a question for Susan? Yeah. Okay. I will entertain a motion to accept Susan as a, a, a at large uh, to serve as our child advocate I move. on the LUM board. So moved. Thank you, Chris. A second, please. Second. Thank you, Deb. All in favor of accepting Susan, say aye. Aye. And opposed? The guys haven't. All right. Welcome aboard, well, Susan. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. I wanted to, if you, I guess maybe not an additional agenda item, but I just wanted to take a moment to say thank you to our president, Chuck Anderson, for serving in this role this year and several years on executive council, but thank you in particular for 2022 and Tom Kanabi, who's not able to join us this evening, who's served as a building and grounds for 2022. So uh, you talked about being a good and faithful servant and I certainly see that in you, Chuck. We have a little gift for you, uh, your own lum cookie jar with some goodies in it mm -hmm. and a little card and thank gift. You so much. you got one for Tom as well, but. I wanted to kind of just look back. You kind of reviewed, we weren't, we didn't compare our notes before this, but Chuck was kind of walking us through the year. And I just thought, you think about what you've been able to help guide Lum through over the last year, all the bed nights, over 12,000 bed nights. So over 12,000 times somebody has stayed at Lum uh, in 2022 and gotten a a safe place to stay and hospitality, kindness, food. Think of our food pantries downtown and on the west side and having record numbers of people show up, uh, particularly downtown. I think there were over 90 last week. So, you know, and it was like in the 30s in the pandemic. So the need is increasing and people are the food pantry is responding to that need. Our after school program put together something so the kids could have an all day care during spring break this past March. 
we had our 50th anniversary celebration in April at the Long Center. That was just really fun, really amazing. Uh, tons of volunteers have come through. Terry Anderson has been tracking that. I mean, we've got hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of volunteer hours that are being poured into this organization. Our Day for Dads in June is trying to empower families and empower fathers in particular to care for their kids and, and be seen, be valued. Of course, Lum Camp in July, which is, is always an amazing, exhausting, wonderful time. We've had a number of people uh, kind of come through our shelter and then use our MASH program and then use that MASH program to get into secure housing. It helps them. They pay $5 a night. We'll give them, give not them, but their landlord, not only the accumulated $5, we'll double it. And so people, we've had six people take advantage of that so far this okay. year. Wonderful Ooh. to see. Hunger Hike was awesome in September. We raised over $118,000 together with St. Tom's and Food Finders. Uh, just the number of kids that we serve day and night. Uh, I mean, we don't have pictures of the tax uh, program or the immigration clinic or a num ID clinic, a number of other programs that run uh, on a regular basis. And then our sprint through the fall with, this is the Turkey Trot at uh, Center at Connection Point Church. And it was, a spectacular day and Jubilee Christmas at 29 different sites and helping like 1700 some children experience Christmas. It was just really a spectacular year. So I just wanted to again kind of circle back and say thank you Chuck for leading the charge through this year and uh, all the success we've seen. And thanks to the whole exec council, to all the board members. It was really, it's been a remarkable year. So, yeah, thank you for that. Yeah. I wanted to highlight our November events. This was the uh, the turkey trot. Are you seeing this online here? No, I'm not here. Yes, maybe you didn't see that whole other thing. I'm sorry. But yeah, the turkey trot was wonderful. It's my wife and my daughter there uh, that are the two in the left-hand corner, but that was that was fun. We had 860 runners, raised $39,000 for long. It was great. And Connection Point was such a great venue. I just, thanks to that church and their hospitality. And we had to scramble a little that morning. We, we had a bigger crowd than we were expecting. And then right after that was the... Community Thanksgiving feast, and we estimate we gave over 800 meals into the community through all the food that was provided, and that was wonderful. Josh Prokopi led both the Turkey Trot and Community Thanksgiving feast and Jubilee Christmas, and did a remarkable job on all of those. So, well done, Lum, for that. Thanks to C Central Presbyterian Church for the hospitality once again, for the community Thanksgiving feast. So it's always a pleasure to be there. We were invited, oh, I'll get to that one in a minute. This is Jubilee Christmas, just a few different pictures from that. I was able to visit some of the sites, other board members went to sites and every one of those sites was special, uh, unique, hospitable, wonderful in its own way. Like. It's just really an amazing thing to see people putting in all the hours and giving all the the funds and making little handmade things to give to people. It was really, really uh, just a blessed time to be part of that and see all that happening. The very next day, our after school program families, and we ended up finding some of our alum camp families as well. Look at the smile on this kid's face with those cheerleaders. <laughs> and yeah, Pablo, I don't know how he did it, magically like cut her out. And she's like our banner for our Facebook page now. So <laughs> it really is a, a cool thing that Pablo did with that. But Levy at Purdue, Levy runs uh, restaurants at different universities, I guess, invited 
uh, some of our families to come. And Purdue Pete came, the cheerleaders came, and we went to a women's basketball afterwards, mm -hmm. basketball game afterwards there at Mackey. And then they had a, uh, Purdue had a teddy toss for us. So the lady pushing that cart full of teddy bears, we had uh, three, uh, four full carts of teddy bears. So we had teddy bears to give to all of our after school programs. Uh, today, uh, Pablo helped organize a Lum Plush Animal Day to get rid of, give out more of the, uh, uh, <laughs> sound right. give out more of the uh, plush animals. And then the rest were going to like a uh, clothing, the secondhand clothing place that could also uh, get them into the hands of people who would desire them. So it's been a, a busy, busy time since we last got together, but it was amazingly fruitful and wonderful. Yeah. Excellent. Yes. The other item that you know, was your end giving, I assume those first three you just covered. That's what that was it. That was the covering of that. Yes. Okay. And the year end giving. Yeah, I just wanted to, to say and thanks to Leanna for running some numbers that I I told her I feel like we're we've had very strong giving because I open the mail and, and see that and write thank yous and all of those things. It just seems like there's been a real outpouring of generosity in the last six weeks and Leanna ran the numbers and indeed there has been, we're on pace to make our budget for 2022 and mm -hmm. if not go beyond that. So it's even again, this morning, there was a, a $10,000 gift from a couple. It's just like re remarkable to see these kind of things happening and really, really wonderful. So that's encouraging news. I know you, it's always a little anxiety producing on where are we? How are we going to do so much of our, it's about 40% of our budget comes in in November and December, I think. So, but the community continues to be strong, you know, 2020, 2021, we're so strong, but they're also COVID affected. We weren't sure, is that going to continue in 2022? And it really has, it really has. So thanks be to God. Thanks be to all the generous people in this community. And, comprehensive, comprehensive campaign. Yes. So not much on this tonight. I just wanted to remind you, we do have a, a task force that's looking, is working with the architect to discern what is our best path forward. And man, getting a couple of these construction people, engineering type people on this team has been a game changer. You know, it is like... I don't know, it goes from like me trying to make toast for my kids to like a chef walking in the door and there's actually like something that happens. It's It's been pretty incredible, the horsepower. Uh, it's just been wonderful. So Tom, Bob, Todd, Eileen have been fantastic. We hope to come back in January and make a recommendation to the board. Um, I'm in conversation with the, the, I'll just say it, the YWCA to see if it's even a, a real option, because uh, we don't, we don't know for sure if, if it is. Um, so we'll present A, B, C, and D, um, those different scenarios that we've talked about in past months. If you need a refresher on that, just let me know, or you can go back and look at past um, board minutes or board recordings and see what those are. But yeah, I think it's becoming more clear what our what could be a good course of action. Um, we'll see if you agree with what the task force is uh, is thinking. But hopefully in January, if not, uh, definitely in February, kind of be our our moment of decision and moving forward or not. Okay. So yeah. And then the last one was the staff bonus. Mm -hmm. The exec council uh, made a very generous move on behalf of the whole board and Chuck put some good language to this. This was sent out to the staff uh, just yesterday. So it's with heartfelt thanks that I'm, this is Chuck speaking, it's with heartfelt thanks that I am sending this note regarding a year end bonus, although the amount is not, nor is it ever a reflection of your dedication and hard work. Please know that I speak on behalf of the board of directors and send our appreciation for your commitment to LUM's mission. God bless Chuck Anderson, 
And so the board said $125 to every employee, hourly, salary, as long as they've been here three months and we're still employed here. And the mm -hmm. intent was that everybody would have about $100 of kind of net extra pay. net pay because mm -hmm. taxes would have to be taken out of that and we're going through the payroll. Mm -hmm. So I'm one of those staff members and there was a number of other staff members that uh, replied, you know, and just said, thank you so much. This is a really thoughtful gift. And I just want to chime in and on behalf of the whole staff say, thank you. That was kind of you. And we appreciate that and appreciate you seeing us and valuing us and encouraging us in that way. So thank you. You're most welcome. Thanks. You're, you're, the whole staff. Thank you. Uh, old business. Uh, there was none before um, today, uh, nor nothing mentioned in new agenda items. So um, items nine and 10 are really off the table. Our executive director and staff reports. Um, that was uh, that was somewhat uh, interesting. Uh, and one of the things that I thought of when I was talk, uh, re reading your report, Nina, is that the, num the increasing number and the staff or volunteers that you have, are you, are you being able to maintain the, the service? I, I, I saw in the West side that he's having some difficulty. Larry is having difficulty with some, some, uh, some, the, some of the volunteers too. The volunteers. Yeah, at least that was, it was mentioned, and I didn't know. Is that? I've got a pretty steady group. I mean, okay. they, they, and then there's uh, we get um, some of the fraternities and sororities mm -hmm. will send over, and they help unload trucks and things like that. Even if they're only there for an hour and a half, it's a wonderful help. Oh. Did they people. sign up for that? Like, did they, they sign up online? Yeah, okay. they can sign up. Okay. So there's, I mean, there's the opportunity for people to sign up for yeah, the they, side one too. Yeah. So. And I think the reason we get um, the one fraternity got hooked into us a couple of years ago, Delta, Delta, and they kind of bring some others with them. And they've been pretty steady. And they even um, played Santa Claus for the kids and they can go over and do some other things. So they they reach out other lenders that they can't do that. Once you can get hooked into a fraternity or a sorority, they kind of adopt each other. And that it's a big help calling all that food for us old people. <laughs> so. If I could if I could just add a bit about the West Side Pantry, um, they do have enough volunteers that are showing up to run the food pantry. The issue is when you're a TFAB location, you have to go to Food Finders um, a few times a month to pick up food. And that's where they're struggling with finding someone to do that. So it, the volunteer issue isn't um, as simple as just running the pantry, so. Mm -hmm. And I've said hard switch the, I wasn't volunteering on Friday, but it seemed like they had enough people for that. So mm -hmm. now I've switched it to helping get the food from Food Finders to bring it over to you. So yeah, that is good. Is that something that people can sign up for online as well? The, the pickups. No, I think you just have to either contact me or Larry, and we'll okay, yeah. no. Yeah. And I was thanks for that. We we had kind of a mystery donation that we weren't sure which came from the organization, and Yale had to do some research to find out where it came from, and it turned out to be. Um, with a company, I can't remember now if it was New York or New Jersey, which we were like, is this real? <laughs> this going on? It turned out to be the father of one of the fraternity guys who was worked the last oh, 10 years. Really. And he was so excited about what his son had been doing that he collected their their office has employee donations. You know, they collect donations and then choose somewhere to send yeah. it. And so that organization halfway across the country sent us wow. a wow. four picture donation because of wow. that fraternity of kids who oh. weren't That's really yeah. so, oh, cool. And we had a big delivery from the farmhouse um, on oh. campus. And they bought a, a pickup truck full of Kansas. It was like 350 pounds. 
<laughs> Would I be able to give an update on the weather? Yeah, please do. Sure. Um, at, well, as you know, we're um, headed into some bad weather starting tomorrow, and it and the temperatures really are the dangerous thing that we look at, and and that um, goes through Monday. So we've been able to find staff to um, open up the winter warming station Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday night, and Monday night, three hours early um, at 9 p.m. So word's gone out to all law enforcement and firefighters and all the our, our partner agencies in town um, that if anyone is in need of a shelter, um, will be opened up at, at 9 p.m. Um, those individuals will get a very, very warm place to stay. And if you work at LUM, you know it's warm. <laughs> um, and they'll have a mat to sleep on, but they'll also, um, we've, we've been getting a lot of donations of sack lunches that we normally give out when they leave, but they will get one when they get there and then they'll get one when they leave. Um, we also are, we've got bus drivers at the after school program that have um, agreed to shuttle um, uh, shelter guests from LTHC at least on um, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday nights. Um, we haven't secured one yet for Monday at 9 p.m. and they'll shuttle people from the LTHC day shelter down to both the emergency shelter, which opens up at nine, and the winter warming station that opens up at nine. Um, you may have seen a couple of our frantic emails um, this week. We're looking for some volunteers to just show up on their own with shovels and dig out the buses because we think that's probably going to be an issue on Friday that when the bus drivers show up, um, you know, the plow that does our, our lot is going to probably plow in the buses. So hopefully we'll get some people that um, will show up in the time frame of 5 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. with their own shovels and, and shovel those out and we'll be surprised when they are. The other thing we're trying to do, I'm sorry. Good night. You said Friday night, right? Friday night and Saturday night. We don't anticipate um, having any issues according to the forecast on Thursday night. Um, but Friday is probably the big snow day. And then if there's anything left over on Saturday, hopefully we'll have volunteers to dig us out then too. Although do we have anyone contracted to keep that parking lot clean in general? Yes. Yeah, we have someone contracted to do both of our lots and most of our sidewalks. And we also make it a chore of the winter warming station and of the shelter to do um, some of the cleanup too on the stairs and, and the sidewalks. But um, but the buses are the buses get plowed in because they're parked there and, and the contractor really can't do much about that. Would a small subcompact utility tractor with a loader be of any value? <laughs> um, if, if it comes with an operator, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I'm asking because if I'm I'm just not clear on what the scope of your request is. If you have work opportunities for the guests and you have a contractor that cleans the parking lot, it's I'm trying to wrap my brain around what you actually are needing because the, I mean the buses I'm are parked. Right, the buses right. are parked against the we have three um, 18 seater I think buses that are parked against the building, and when the contractor comes through the lot, they're okay. really just pushing snow against the buses. Um, and normally we wouldn't need them until January, but because of this situation, we're hoping to get some volunteers to dig it out. So I don't have to ask the shelter staff and the bus drivers to do that. Um, so does that, does that help? Take care of it. Awesome. Thanks, Steve. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Awesome. The other thing we're trying to do is make sure that um, we help our guests remember that it is Christmas Sunday morning. Um, so I put a call out for any carolers. I think we have maybe about a half a dozen at this point. Um, I will supply the song list and the lyrics. Um, and we're also, <laughs> we're also gonna get them a, a little bit more special of a breakfast treat and serve hot chocolate. And um, hopefully that'll be nice for our guests to know that um, we think they're special and we think it's a special day. We don't want them to forget that. So, so if anybody's interested, there's another email out there um, with that request as well. Nice. Yeah, that was Pablo's idea. I think it's a great idea. And 
grateful that people are going to go at 6 a.m. and sing on Christmas morning. Yes, yes, 6 a.m. on Sunday morning. And Eileen Weiss assured me that she could do that, plus sing in the choir at Mass and be at the Christmas dinner at Jefferson High School serving. <laughs> that sounds like Eileen, yeah. 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 And it's only one outfit. She dresses up once and she goes through. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Pablo. Thank you. I was actually stalling, hoping that our client would show up. Um, yeah, I think then, let's do the prayer requests. And then if she's here, we'll still do it. If not, we'll just end without talking okay. to her. I did have a, a picture of her. I can at least share that, I guess. Um, her at jubilee christmas she has uh four kids a six-year-old a five-year-old and twin one-year-olds so i don't know where she is tonight i don't know why she wouldn't be here but she got a big uh kitchen set it seemed very pleased with it and uh she was at big times i believe and so wonderful wonderful mom and i talked to her this afternoon i know she was trying to get here but Life happens sometimes. So, yep. Prayer requests. Anybody have anything in particular they would like us to pray about? The impending storm, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Safety in that. What else? Yeah, Penny. The family of Nick DiCarlo, who passed away over the weekend, was very well known in the lobbyist community and the mental health. Mm -hmm. would have been 56 yesterday. I would also add the families of the 19 individuals uh, who were experiencing homelessness who passed away in our community over the last year. Um, I was um, honored to be able to attend the service for them this this evening at LTHC and it was a, a very nice service um but it, it's a it's a big number it's it's one of the highest number of individuals um without a home in our community that, that have died in in one calendar year so so for their families Shelter. Yeah, we've had a lot of turnover at, on staff. Um, our our uh, ones that have been there a while have been very faithful, but it's the new staff that just keep spinning. So, yep. Anything else? Please join me in prayer. God, on this uh, longest night of the year, we thank you for being a God of light, God who triumphs over darkness. We think of those tonight who are suffering from illness, from mental illness, from addiction, from grief, from want, from trauma. We pray for your healing. We think in particular of the family of Nick DiCarlo and all of the families of the 19 people who are experiencing homelessness who passed away in this community this past calendar year. We ask for your comfort, your hope, your strength. God, we pray for staffing for our shelter. We pray for protection for people who are in the elements in this extremely cold weather that's moving in. We pray that you would provide us a staff there that's able to stay and provide the hospitality and stability that we long for. God, we thank you as our president Chuck Anderson reminded us that you've called us to love one another as you have loved us. You've called us to be your hands and feet in this community, to serve you, 
to pursue that affirmation from you to hear, well done, good and faithful servant. We pray that you would help us to do that here at Lafayette Urban Ministry, to be your hands and feet, to be good and faithful servants. As we go to our families and loved ones this Christmas season, this holiday season, help us to be your hands and feet and eyes and voice in those situations too. Fill us with your patience, your compassion, your humor, your joy, your love. We pray for reconciliation. We pray for healing. We pray for breakthrough. We pray for new chapters to be written in our relationships with people we love. We pray that for our guests and our clients. Thank you tonight for the calendar, the budget, the exec council slate. Thank you for Tom Kanabi and for Chuck Anderson and their service on the exec council this past year. God, keep us mindful of what you are doing in our lives and in our midst. Keep us grateful for all the blessings that are all around us. Keep us hopeful as we approach a new year. We thank you that you are with us and within us. It's in your good and gracious name we pray. Amen. 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 May I have a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. <laughs> Thank you, Debbie. Second. Second. Anything. Thank you, Susie. There you go. Our meeting is now adjourned. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank you, Chad. You're welcome.